What you're about to see is a fresh new theory on how the Egyptian pyramids were built in one-third the time and with one-third the labor of the prevailing theories. We will validate the theory here for you using my dad's handmade model and drawings, some history, and photos. The brief history and photos establish that the major components needed for mechanical advantage were readily available during the construction period. They are the wheel, the pulley, the donkey, and trees. The wheel. Most archaeologists and historians believe the first pyramid was built around 4000 BCE. As far back as 4500 BCE or farther, historians believe that the ancient Sumerian civilization thrived in the Mesopotamia region known as the Fertile Crescent, which was situated between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers and along the Nile River in Egypt. Known for their innovation in architecture, art, language, governance, and more, the Sumerians were a highly advanced culture. As depicted in stone carvings and paintings from the period, Sumerian soldiers rode in chariots, at first with a solid wheel and eventually with a spoked wheel. Wheels are shown in this picture taken in King Tut's tomb in 1922. You can see a finely constructed spoke wheel and the rest of the chariot lying behind it. Note what appears to be a sleeve bearing on the hub, one of the many demonstrations of sophisticated mechanical knowledge. Our belief is that the Egyptians and other cultures of antiquity were far more advanced than they are given credit for. We will be discussing that in subsequent videos. The donkey. There is much evidence that the Sumerians and ancient Egyptians relied on beasts of burden for labor, carts, and transportation. Given that the horse had not yet been bred to be the strong animal it eventually became, they preferred the donkey. The traditional preference for the donkey continues to this day in Egypt. The lever and the pulley. It is widely assumed that the ancient Egyptians understood the mechanical advantage of levers for many uses, lifting water from rivers, out of wells, lifting heavy cargo from boats, and were used in many civilizations of the time and prior. Ancient stone pulleys have been found in the region. The Egyptians had a clear understanding of the advantage of tossing a rope over a raised horizontal rolling structure to assist with lifting a heavy object. Trees. It is widely accepted that Egypt and the region enjoyed cooler temperatures 6,000 years ago and it was much more forested than it is today. Therefore, tree trunks were plentiful for building rollers, rails, counterbalances, and log pulleys. What makes this construction theory unique and important is it reduces manpower, resources, cost, and construction time to a third of prevailing theories. The technique incorporates building the four sides of the pyramid at once, moving the blocks a considerably shorter distance with much less effort without the need for massive earthen ramps and all the construction time and labor they would require to build and maintain. Additionally, eliminating the need to turn the multi-ton blocks around numerous 90 degree corners, which would be very difficult. This theory uses very simple counterbalance and pulley technology to lift the blocks and fill the interior of the structure with essential rubble all in the same motion. This reduces the need for hundreds of men and donkeys pushing and pulling heavy blocks up lengthy ramps en route to the stone's final resting place. In this theory, the stones merely travel from the base, point A, to its row, point B, in a straight line, the most efficient way possible. Construction would begin by exposing and leveling the bedrock. The architect would mark off the boundaries of each corner and a plumb line would be snapped as a guide for block placement. The rails and rollers would be set into place and the first blocks would be put on the horizontal roller carts and pushed along the rails until they reached the next required spot for the block to be put in place. After the first layer of block was laid, the lifting devices would be constructed on all four sides. This would include the vertical rails, pulley apparatus, and woven bags would be filled with rubble until their weight equaled that of the block to be lifted. This would offset the weight of the block, making it very easy for a few men to pull it up the side of the pyramid and swing it into place. Once the block reached the desired height and was set in place, the bag was cut and the rubble emptied inside the pyramid. Given the extreme angle of the side walls, 52 degrees for many of the pyramids, the rubble-filled interior would keep the sides from collapsing under the weight of the blocks. 
You can see the rubble-filled interiors in these pictures. The burial chambers, air shafts, stairwells, and various rooms within the pyramids were built as the rubble elevation reached the desired heights of the architect's design. We feel this is a much more feasible and practical method for transporting hundreds of thousands of huge blocks to build the walls of the pyramids, and, in the same motion, transporting the essential rubble to fill the interior to avoid collapse and support the various chambers constructed within. No enormous earthen ramps are needed that would be a monumental feat to construct and maintain in themselves. The single ramp theory would add over six times the distance the block would have to travel from the base to its final destination. The concept of ramps encircling the pyramid would require the blocks to travel even longer distances around more 90 degree corners before arriving at their final location. These prevailing theories require 10 times the men, resources, and time to move the blocks than ours. In our model, the weight of the block is counterbalanced and in equilibrium with the weight of the rubble bag. Therefore, it requires very little effort and men to move the stone up the side of the pyramid and swing it into place. For these reasons and many others, we believe it would only have required a third of the men, a third of the time, to lay the blocks needed to construct the pyramids. A much more feasible theory, as efficiency, cost, and time were always paramount even in ancient times. Thank you for listening.